In this Debaco University video, we're going to go over drying systems for cannabis, looking at both the hanging drying system that we see here, as well as a rack system to give you some of the pros and cons of each, as well as show you some actual examples of cannabis drying so you can decide what drying system is the best fit for your situation. All right, let's get into drying systems regarding uh, cannabis. Now here we're seeing a lot of hang drying, but remember it's also rack or screen drying as another option. And we'll see both of those mentioned here, as well as going out into greenhouse to also compare them. So first off, just in general, what is the reason for drying? When we're looking at kind of drying, the goal is to produce dry flour that has improved taste and flavors when ignited, because we're not just selling kind of an end product, ideally that will be kind of gone through and burned in some way. So the drying process goal is to improve the taste and flavors of that cannabis end product when it's going through the point of ignition. Now the drying process just in general, when we're looking at kind of the process as it relates to cannabis, this should be viewed not as a race. It's not kind of to dry first and get there first. The goal is to produce a quality end product. It's more about kind of the destination than kind of getting there. Uh, this might take a little bit longer or might want to wait another day to ensure a quality end product. Now the area that you'll be drying in uh, should be very clean and tightly climate controlled. And that's true if it's a very small area or it's a very large area. Uh, it should be very clean top to bottom and very controlled of both temperature, light, air circulation, and the all important humidity as well. So what's things that you should be avoiding in the drying area? When we're looking at the drying area, high heat and intense light can degrade the cannabinoids. So we're not saying no light, and that's ideal, but you don't have to have absolutely no light, just have very muted light. And it's okay if you turn that muted light on and go into that room. It doesn't have to be 100% solid, complete darkness, but make sure the light is minimal, low intensity, and a very short duration. We also want to avoid uh, speed drying. So we don't want to take a hair dryer to it and speed dry because that will cause larger buds not to dry consistently, which will lead to an inferior end product. And the whole goal here is to produce that quality end product. So what are the two options or well, the two main options? We have the rack or screen drying system. You can see that here. Uh, it's advantages is that it requires uh, minimal space, so it's great for large volume harvest, meaning they can be easily stacked on top of one another. Uh, the disadvantages, it does create flat spots on the buds and does usually require some pruning to be done ahead of time, because that reduced space, you have reduced plant materials, we can see here. Now comparing that to the other system, we can see right here, uh, we call it the plant hanging system. So in this example, there's minimal prep of the plant material ahead of drying, so that's what makes it advantageous. However, the disadvantage is that it does take up more space because uh, that plant material is a greater volume of that simple plant material, and it can have increased odds of uh, contaminants developing, such as mold, for example, simply because you have so much more material. They both can produce a quality end product, so just keep that in mind that the end product should not really be based on the system of drying, but we have to be a little bit more careful with the hanging system simply because they have more plant volume. Now, if you've learned about these systems, let's go into to kind of a drying uh, area situation. Let's look at where we're going to see some plants hanging, some plants uh, drying on a rack or screen method uh, to give you in kind of a real world kind of example of both of these systems so you can ensure that you're selecting the one that is the best fit for your given situation. Enjoy. So here we're looking at the all important drying process for cannabis harvest. And we can see the large branches have been cut down, they're hung upside down on a wire. The light relatively is minimal, there's a air circulation on the bottom. Behind me there's also a fan blowing to again help air moving throughout the under canopy here of the drying process. Helping control humidity uh, allows this to dry down very evenly and very consistently. We don't want to have like wet spots or areas of trapping moisture because that could lead potentially to disease. So we want to make sure we're having this all be consistent and this is one way we see here that it can be achieved. 
All right, and here we can see the drying process in general. We see the fan blowing and we're seeing kind of a little pathway, which is important for people to be able to walk through. But we're also seeing the importance of the ability for air to circulate. We see a little dehumidifier there. We are seeing some lights on, which of course uh, is imp important to be able to walk around. But again, these are muted lights. This image here, again, is showing the importance of that barrier under the plants. You do not want to have your plants directly touching uh, the ground there. Now a couple are getting some natural sunlight and that's okay. Keep in mind that all those fan leaves have been removed, the entire plants have been cut down, and there's that area of space below and we also see the area of space above because we want to have even air circulation around the entire plant material. We don't want to just have it at the bottom, just at the top. We want to be mindful of all of those areas. As we're looking at the branches here, we can see many of those large fan leaves have been removed, which is great. It really aids in the drying down process. Now on the ground there, we're also seeing some uh, tarping, some plastic that helps, again, trap any leaves that are falling down as well as maintain uh, a humidity barrier. We've seen that here as well. Looking kind of from the opposite end, looking down, seeing a very consistent harvest, seeing a, a lot of repetition, very important to allow that efficient air circulation, efficient hanging and efficient takedown process. We see some pink tags and some string that can label different varieties, something of interest. So making sure we have a method of labeling and knowing when we harvested, what we harvested and what day um, is all important documentation steps that should be taking. We're seeing here it's a very early drying process, but we are seeing it is initiated. So far, looks like it's going pretty well here. Uh, so monitoring is another important component. Want to make sure that we're setting everything up ahead of time, but also monitoring that and making sure at least uh, everything is going in generally uh, to plan. So here we have different forms of drying. We can see a lot of the dry product right here on screens, all kind of taken down out of the field, uh, put here in a protected greenhouse environment. Yes, there's some benches. We're allowing some air circulation below. These are actually also on screens to again, help that airflow overall and allow that nice, even consistently dry down of the product. Organized, uh, not overly full in any one area. So again, this just helps that drying process to be very even, very efficient, uh, to allow ultimately for the best product to be produced. Now, as we look going down this aisle here of all the different cannabis plant material drying, it is important that it is uh, segregated, it is isolated. This can be from different lots. This can be uh, different forms of grinding. This can be different uh, initial starting materials. We do see that it is, they all are on screens and the screens are on benches and those benches are elevated. We are taking advantage of some of the sun here uh, in this section of the uh, greenhouse to help, again, aid in the drying process. We'll notice that there are some tarps in the background, some shadier locations where we're having the plants that are actually um, hung to dry. But in this area, we are looking at the improvement of utilizing the sun, utilizing that air circulation to be able to take full advantage of every portion of the greenhouse environmental conditions that we have. So here we're looking at a drying process where we have all the kind of hemp plants here hung upside down for a lot of air circulation down here. Uh, and this is allowed for a very efficient and very consistent dry down of the buds. And we can see this is, goes on for quite a ways. This is about half acre of total plants uh, that have been harvested here and initially dried down. And we can see it's being done here in a very controlled manner so that we're getting very consistent harvest and very consistent yields off everything, which is definitely an important part of the process. So here we're taking a look at the drying process, look at the actual dried product, and we can see it's very consistent as it's from the field. Uh, so we're going to have to deal with some variability naturally with the field. But we're looking at the drying process, keeping that humidity, keeping the light relatively low, keeping that air circulation going, preventing moisture from building up. When they all kind of come together, you can get a nice consistent product that looks like this. Now looking way down the greenhouse, we can see that the tabletop benches are being used with some of the branches here. Uh, going through and drying them down, pruning a lot of the leaves off, removing that, putting them on the benches. We can see the vast majority here, the most efficient method is hanging those branches um, on the wire that's been strung in this greenhouse. On both sides, we have kind of light uh, blocking uh, tarps, so we're not getting full intense light. 
It's also helping reduce the amount of heat that we get in the greenhouse. Now there's fans running behind me here to again keep air moving. So that's also important to be sure that we're not letting air get stagnant. We don't want moisture to develop. And that's very important, especially at the sunrise and sunset times during this fall time of year to prevent that moisture from building up within the structure because ultimately that could lead to increased chance of getting bud rot, molds developing, and when you have this much material, it could spread very quickly if you allow it to initially get started. Now here, as we walk down the aisle, we can see very clearly uh, the organization of all those plants hanging above us. We see the hanging method being utilized, but we're also noticing on the bench tops, we're seeing kind of like a rack system also being utilized. And it's important kind of to maximize the space that you have and kind of ran out of space to hang the plants. So why not use the natural bench space? Looking here, these are a little further along that we saw in the early part of the video, and we can see again those fan leaves are evenly removed allowing for those buds even air circulation and really helps that drying process in general also notice that for the most part while we are in a greenhouse we are trying to minimize some of the light and in the background there we can see that there's definitely um, some black plastic and tarps up we're also noticing and probably hearing a little bit uh, of fan moving. So again, air circulation is important and that's uh, a key factor there uh, to be considerate, especially when you're in a greenhouse. Sometimes those vents can open and close, but we really want to make sure we're in sh allowing air to always be moving through those plants. You can see here just the kind of the end product of that when you are getting that fan moving, well, it might be a little bit annoying to be in there. Uh, it definitely does help the overall process. Not heavily blowing on the plants but again keeping that air moving keeping that humidity from building up in any one location now lastly something we do want to consider as we are removing buds from the branches is the disposal of the leftover plant material the cannabis plants do tend to produce kind of stalks that are kind of woody in nature so we want to be mindful of that we want to be um, having a plan uh, that we're going to have to dispose of these at the end of the harvest cycle when we take the valuable uh, buds off the plant and get those dried down. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, you're welcome to sketch any other videos here on Tobacco University.